Hey y'all, Coach NFI here, talking about the 364th day on the sacred calendar as described by Enoch in his book of the Revolutions of the Luminaries of Heaven. And we're also going to be talking about the equinox and when it is. Turns out it's not on March the 20th anymore. Our calendars need to be updated. And in this video, I'm going to show you why. Now, this video is literally brought to you by the Celestial Clock Calendar that you can purchase at coachinthefight.shop. I was working on the new faceplate draft revision that you're looking at here, Rev 5.0, when I started realizing that the dates of the equinox wasn't quite matching up with the date of the Celestials. In other words, that date that they tell us that the equinox falls March the 20th doesn't quite line up. But anyway, We'll come back to the other changes that are made in this latest revision towards the end of this video. You see, it looks quite different than the other clock face. If you want to, you can go to our community page and actually download this faceplate if you wanted to update the clock that you already have. But anyway, let's get into the lesson. When is the 364th day on Enoch's sacred calendar? This day is particularly important because it tells us the last day of the solar year. As you see here in the book of Enoch, it says that the 364th day is when the days and the nights are equal. Thing about it, if we come in and ask the question, when is the equinox? We're given the date of March the 20th. But is that the day when the day length and the length of the nights are equal? It doesn't appear so. Matter of fact, let's come over here to timeanddate.com and look at the sun graph. And since I know somebody's going to point out the time in Jerusalem, we'll use that location for our graph. So we're looking here in the month of March in the year 2022. We have the sunrise and sunset times in these columns, but we have the length of the day in this column. When we scroll down, we see the closest day in which there are 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of darkness is on March the 16th, not March the 20th. When you're looking down here, March the 20th, there's seven minutes of additional daylight, which would mean that the nighttime is short by seven minutes. But when we're looking here on the 16th, the day and the night is within 30 seconds. Let's use a better location that gets more precise using the coordinates 31 degrees north and 88 degrees west. This one here is in the United States down close to Mobile, Alabama or somewhere. But you notice that it's telling us the same thing that on the 16th of March, there are 12 hours of daylight which leaves 12 hours of darkness. Now, this takes into account daylight savings time or fake time, as I like to call it. This artificial jump we see in the graph up here shows where they changed the sunrise and sunset time from six o'clock to seven o'clock. But it doesn't matter. We can still see what we want to see. And that is how on the 16th, we have a six o'clock sunrise and a six o'clock sunset when we're thinking only in standard time and notice over here that solar noon is at 12 o'clock that's why i chose this location because it shows it so perfectly six six and twelve or seven seven and one looking at daylight saving time looking at this little graph here what it's showing us is that the sun bisects the horizon right at 6 a.m. and exactly six hours later it's at high noon and then six hours from there and then once again it's split in half at the horizon at 6 p.m. leaving exactly 12 hours for the night. So that's the day that Enoch was talking about when he said the days and the nights are equal. So that's the 364th day of the sacred solar year which would mean that the 17th is the 365th day or that day that some claim don't exist 
and the first day of the solar year would be March the 18th. So that was one of the changes that we made to the celestial clock calendar was we made it so that it represents the sun entering the fourth gate on March the 18th instead of March the 20th. Because when we look back at March the 20th, we see that the sun is bisected at the horizon at about 654 in the morning and about 704 in the evening, leaving only 11 hours and 53 minutes of darkness opposed to 12 hours and seven minutes of daylight. I'm really excited to have this proof because this is something I've been working on since March the 18th of 2021 when we created this video talking about the vernal equinox. Matter of fact, let me let you listen to it here, how our sundial confirmed the vernal equinox is on March the 18th. Hey y'all, go to the fight here talking about the equinox and if we are currently at the equinox now you're looking at a sundial that my sons and I created from an old satellite dish we're really proud of this idea basically because we were able to use the recycled material you know these satellite dishes are scattered all over the world all over the country um, in people's yards and you know a lot of times people will be glad if you came and dug them up and got rid of them you know, and you know, one thing you could do with these things is take them to the uh, metal recycling bin and get about 25, 30 cent, maybe a dollar for it. I don't, probably not that much. Or you could actually turn it into a sundial, a functional sundial, a way of telling time. But anyway, today we're talking about the equinoxes. And we're getting close to the equinox, as we can see, according to our shadow here. You see that? Mm hmm. We are actually at 12 noon right now. We rushed out here, but the actual high noon, the sun will be the highest in the sky in about an hour. So we'll cut out here in a second and then we'll, Lord willing, we'll come back out here uh, when the sun is the highest in the sky to see if we're actually on the indication that we are at the equinox. But we're here on the 18th. We're actually a couple of days before the equinoxes, and it looks to be like it's going to be a little bit close. Of course, we'll have to come out here and see at about uh, one o'clock, about an hour from now. Um, we'll see. But it looks like it's lining up. And when you look at the lines, we've been tracking it all day, and it appears to be a straight line all the way across indicating that we are close to the equinox or the equilux we might not be at it right there we are actually supposed to be um in a couple of days but i don't know it was interesting to see what the old sundial will have to say about it mm -hmm. so i guess we'll cut out here and then we'll try to come back in uh, about an hour yeah all right so we're back but we're about 20 minutes too early and we can see that our shadow is not quite where it's supposed to be as far as high noon is concerned and exactly high noon it should be lined up with that vertical line right there and if we are on the equinox like we said it shouldn't cast a shadow even on that washer or that nut shouldn't receive a shadow whatsoever but you did say we were a couple of days early right yeah for the equinox we we're a couple of days early um i need to uh verify the angle on this uh celestial pole i mean it looks good it actually should be at 31 closer to about 31.5 um is where this should be lined up at and i don't know what my eyesight it looks to be pretty close all right, we're still about five minutes out as more of the family starts to gather around. We, I'm looking here and we're getting mighty close to the high noon point and it's starting to look like the sun is going to cast a shadow indicating uh, the equinox. But now I'm not sure if it's because only two days does it make that big of a difference when it comes to casting a shadow or something strange here. What do you think, Chris? Um, 
We verified that it's set at 31.5 uh, degrees. Right. And so only during the equinox should this thing line up, unless we're within the margin of error, talking about two days, and maybe two days don't make a difference, but it seems like it would. Well, yeah, it seems like to me, like it's still, like it's actually going to make it straight to the middle. Even though it's two days, so it may be that at this angle, two days doesn't make a big enough difference. Well, all right, well, we'll I'll go get on the calculator and actually see um, right after we get this, right after we get it high noon. Um, I'll go in and I'll actually look and see um, if two days should make a, a difference at all. I would think it should. My, my guess would be that it would. But, you know, we'll see in a few minutes. All right, so let's verify the angle one more time. I think, Chris, you the one set this angle, didn't you? That's correct. And it should be really close to about 31.5. Right. Is that what you see there? That is what I see. So we're, we're verified that we are at the almost absolute correct angle, at least as far as we can get it with the tools that we have. But we appear to be at 31.5. So that's good. And that's what we got. We see that it's casting no shadow on the nut at all. Well, that's odd to me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm not an expert on this at all, you know. But like, like Stacy, like you said, it should make a difference. And if it did, the shadow would be on the nut, if not on the washer, for you know, two day difference. I mean, we look at this line up here that we made. Um, it was uh, February the 21st. And then we see the tick marks that we're making now here, which is today, and how much of a difference that actually made in that little bit of time from February 21st to today. But then we think that, you know, right here where we're at doesn't make a difference. I don't know. Is today the equinox? Yeah, I'm just wondering. Well, we'll pray for sun on the 20th. And see what's different, what's odd, why is it doing this? Again, we were at 31.5 degrees, so why do we not have a shadow? Do you, do you, do you, you can see better. I'm looking through this camera. I can't really see that well, but you look at it's gotten to the point where there's no shadow. That's so in any direction. So, as you can see, at this point, we were all pretty much highly confused. But I think our confusion was divinely inspired because not being allowed to let it rest, I went in and got on the computer and started trying to figure it out. Only a few hours later, here is what we came up with. Hey, y'all. Coach in the fight here. Got Chris and Stacy with me. Hey y'all. Hello. And we're looking at the sundial that we created out of an old satellite dish. And today we're having a very special class because this sundial is responsible for a new revelation that the Father has given to us within the last few minutes, last 30 minutes or so. Okay. And that is that today is the equinox. Hmm. Okay. But what day is it? Today is March 18th. That's right. Today is March the 18th. But when is the equinox supposed to fall? The 20th. March 20th. Yeah. March 20th. But I'm here to tell you right now, and I'm going to prove it in this video. I'm going to prove it that today is actually the equinox. Well, let us see. Okay. All right. Now, like we said, this is March the 18th. And praise the Lord, we have been getting sun on this day, and that's primarily why we've been tracking the um, uh, the sundial 
today was because we ain't got no sun here the last few days, right? Right. We had a storm last night and it was been, it's been very cloudy lately, yes. And, but I think it was the Father's will that we actually got sun today because when we went out there and we actually started looking at it, um, we can actually see that it landed on the um, equinox, talking about the sundown. Now, this ain't the proof. This is just the empirical evidence. I'm going to get to the proof after this one. But I just wanted to show you guys these uh, pictures that we took earlier. Go the right way here. We had, um, well, we'll get back to that. Well, we see here that the shadow, we, we are starting to put dots on the sundial marking the shadow. And we can watch the progression of that shade as it crosses um, across the sundial. Mm -hmm. Now, we see here how the shadow is getting close to the um what we call the high noon when the shadow will be um, uh, straight up and down north south or something like that you see the shadow is still getting uh, shorter and shorter as we approach that time and that's when we started to get a little bit concerned yeah right mm -hmm. because we're looking at this and we're like hey it looks like it's gonna fall on the nut the washer It's gonna be a equinox indicator yeah, um, I think we were concerned because all everything that you were going by um, was telling us that it is not time yet. Yeah, it's not supposed to be till March the 20th, but we have the sundial. And let me show you the next slide over here where we, we're we using um, the celestial pole that is set at the correct angle to help us to uh, get a... Um, um, the correct shadow on the um, the sundown. We see here how precise it actually is. We're supposed to be at 31.5, and that looks pretty close to 31.5. What you think, Chris? Yeah. All right. Can't get much closer than that. And so the sundown is correct, but then we see that the shadow continue to get closer to the equi the the equinox um indicator mm -hmm. right the longer we looked at it the closer it got until we got to this point right here where it's actually on it the shadow is being cast on the nut only yeah. it's, it's not even on the washer we see there 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 is no shadow on the nut yeah it would be dark where you would see the shadow the the, the pole is shaded you can see it looks dark but the shadow is not being cast anywhere else other than where it's supposed to be if on the equinox yeah mm -hmm. so i went in and i did a quick calculation because we were talking about whether that two days makes a difference and turns out two days should be at half an inch wow a half an inch meaning and if you come back march the 20th whereas this shadow right here is showing a zero percent length when you come back on the 20th it's actually going to be a half an inch off that's all the way off of the nut. That's all the way off of the nut and off the washer and back onto the sundial. Okay, so all of that was, like we said, that's empirical evidence that we're on the equinox, that today is the equinox. But, you know, empirical evidence really doesn't go a long way. You know, my eyes may be different than yours, but the father also pointed me over to the history of the Gregorian calendar. And it actually shows from the, what we're going to see here on this page, Britannica.com is what's talking about this uh, Gregorian calendar. It's going to prove to us that today is the equinox. Okay. Okay. So let's go down and let's skim through here. I should have read this uh, very thoroughly. Um, we see right here where it's talking about the Gregorian calendar it says all as the new style calendar solar dating system now in general use it was proclaimed in 1582 1582 by Pope Gregory the eighth as a reform of the Julian calendar so now that date is important 1582 we'll come back to that here in a second when we scroll down a little lower in the um, um, web page, Botanica page here on the Gregorian calendar, it's talking about how the Julian calendar was changed to the Gregorian calendar. And it tells the reasons why the Julian calendar was changed to the Gregorian calendar. But if, and if we scroll on down here, 
It says, although this regression has amounted to 14 days by Pope Gregory's time, he based his reform on restoration on the vernal equinox, then falling on March the 11th. Okay. So what that's saying is that Pope Gregory changed the calendar when he when the, when the calendar was 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 changed to what we now know as the Gregorian calendar. One of the mm -hmm. things that he changed on it was he changed the the days from uh, March the 11th which the vernal equinox was falling on March the 11th then. Mm -hmm. And he changed it to where it actually fell on March the 21st. It says, um, then falling on March the 11th to the date, March the 21st, it had in 325. So in other words, in 325, during the Council of Nicaea, yeah. the vernal equinox was falling on March the 21st. Mm -hmm. okay. That was 325. But then in 1582, yeah. the vernal equinox was not falling on March the 21st. It was falling on March the 11th. Right. So over the course of 1200. Those, those years, well, about 1,200 years, we lost, what, about 10, okay. 9 or 10 days. Mm, okay. All right. So we'll come over to a calculator. And what we'll do is we'll put in 1582. Minus 325, that gives us about 1,257 years. And we're dividing by 10 days. What that tells us is that we're losing, one, or they lost from, from 325 to 1582. 10 days equates to one day over the course of 125 years. For instance, if you got the equinox set for March the 20th this year, mm -hmm. if you go back, if you go forward 125.7 years, the equinox will be a day earlier. March 19th. It'll be no, March the 19th, mm -hmm. okay? So, we Look at when the the calendar was put into effect when it was declared by Gregory in 1582 until now. So we have 2020 minus 1582. That's 438 years divided by 125.7. We end up with three about three days mm -hmm. three and a half days so what that's telling us what you was about to say i was just gonna say so that's telling us that instead of it being um march 20th it falls three days approximately three days before that approximately three days before that and what we saw it falling today that three days looks like march the 18th the equinox is now on March the 18th. It's not on March the 20th anymore. It's on March the 18th. So once again, our calendars are drifting. We're seeing evidence of the Earth's precession. But I can imagine they will update the calendars as it caused riots the last time they did so. Back there with Pope Gregory in 1582. So they're probably not going to update that calendar anytime soon. But... We did on the celestial clock calendar. This was one of the changes that we made in this revision, along with adding the gates. But the most significant change you'll notice is that we have the new moon position down here by six o'clock. We think this draft revision is easier to read and understand. But y'all let me know what you think in the comment section. Let me show you the updated gate dates now with 318 being when the sun enters the fourth gate. These will be the dates in which the sun enters the other gates. But we'll cover those more in a future video. Make sure you subscribe and have your notifications turned on so you can see when those videos come out. So the conclusion to this video is that the 364th day on the celestial calendar as of today, it's March the 16th. 
that's when the days and the nights are equal. And March the 18th is the spring equinox. But I have to say again, that's as of today, which proves the point that the Gregorian calendar is drifting. And if it's not updated, it's going to completely fall out of sync, proving that we need the sacred calendar. Our father's calendar, which is made up of the sun, the moon and the stars, which will never get out of sync. So go ahead and hit the like button if you got anything out of this video. Hit the dislike button if you didn't. But leave me a comment either way and I'll see you there.